Sosu and the Bukhari Boys by Lawrence Damani Sosu looked at the money in his mother's hands and remained standing. He looked around to see if his father was around and was glad he wasn't. Despite the birthday party last night, Sosu woke up this morning feeling uneasy. The day was Wednesday and the Bukhari boys, the BB of Eden School, had something to show one another. Bukhari did remind Sosu the previous day about the midweek show, so he couldn't pretend that he had forgotten. He was supposed to prepare, and that meant some extra money in his pocket. So how could his mother give him the same amount as she did every day? He folded his arm across his chest and frowned. Take it, Mr. Sanku said, adding, please. But Sosu, looking like an angry boy who had been hurt, shook his head, frowned, and kept standing. Vivian had already taken her stipend and was walking towards the gate. How he wished Uncle Sam hadn't left. But right at dawn, his uncle had left. His uncle loved traveling at dawn in order to beat traffic, he claimed, although he used public transport. Soso really wished his uncle was around, for he would have easily asked him for extra money for his midweek show with his friends at school. Then Soso saw his father coming into the house. Soso noticed that his father had lost a little weight, quite unlike his usual self. But he looked strong and steady. What's going on? Mr. Ranku asked. You kids are getting late for school. Mr. Sanku made another attempt to encourage Sosu to take the money, but Sosu looked away. Take it before I change my mind. Sosu turned to look at his father, still frowning, but he refused to take the money. Take it at once, Mr. Ranku shouted. Moving towards Susu. Now, the angry boy knew what his father would do if he continued to be stubborn. Slowly, he took the money and went towards the gate. Hey boy, Mr. Uncle called out. Not even a thank you. Susu stopped but refused to turn to look at his parents. He heard his mother say, It's alright, things will get better. Throughout the morning, Sosu's heart was burning with anger. He watched Mr. Quiz teaching mathematics, his favorite subject, but his mind did not follow. When the bell rang for lunch, he remembered the small amount of money he had in his pocket and resumed his worries. What would he do when he met his friends? They would display their wealth and tell how their parents were good to them, but he would only have a few cities to show off. Sosu felt his parents were very mean. Otherwise, why did they give him such a small amount of money? Look at his friend Bukhari, who always brought a lot of money to school. He wore a pair of bright white canvas shoes and a new school uniform. Bukhari's father's car dropped him at school every day while he and Vivian had to walk. His thoughts were interrupted when Bukhari came over to him. Hey, why are you still in the classroom? Let's go out. Yeah, let's go. Sosu got up, pretending to be happy. Outside, their friends, Sunka and Abi joined them. Let's go for fried rice, Bukhari announced. He was the leader of the four-member group, calling themselves the Bukhari Boys, or BB for short. They were all December born, which was why they became close friends. Each lunch break was like Christmas for the Bukhari Boys. At the rice seller's place, Bukhari displayed his generosity. He bought plenty of fried rice and enough chicken for each boy to have two pieces. The other boys made generous contribution. When it was Sosu's turn, he felt too ashamed to bring a small amount of money out of his pocket. After the meal, they sat under the big mango tree to talk about other people. When the conversation became more lively, Sosu decided to ask Bukhari a question. You've got a lot of money, Bukhari, said Susu. Your father gives you a lot of money, doesn't he? Not my father, Bukhari replied. As my mother who gives me money, she's very kind. 
That reply made Susu feel even more angry with his mother for giving him and Vivian a small amount of money for school. Back home, Mrs. Uncle sat on a wooden stool in her kitchen. Susu's behavior in the morning still worried her. Since she returned from the market, where she sold beads and bangles for girls, her mind had been occupied with thoughts about her family. She knew she was doing her best to look after her two children and husband. The money she got from her trading fed her family and paid their fees and bought some clothing for them. They were not rich, not like other families Susu was comparing them with, but she knew they were doing their best. Ever since her husband lost his job, things have been extra tough. Every day, Mr. Uncle went out searching for a job and often returned home late and sad. Sometimes, the money was not enough, so Mrs. Uncle had to work extra hard, which caused her back pain and neck pains. This school term, things had been difficult, so she had postponed the payments of her children's school fees. Even now, she had only money to pay half the amount. All this weighed her down as she peeled the yam for the evening meal. Her aluminum saucepan still had some of the dried fish soup she prepared three days ago. That would do for this night. Now, the kerosene stove she had lit had gone off. When she checked, she noticed the stove had run out of kerosene. She reached for the coal pot and filled it with charcoal. The smoke from the unbent coal entered her eyes and drew some tears. But Mrs. Uncle kept finding it until the smoking ceased. In times like this, Mrs. Uncle knew what to do. She didn't want her children to see her in a sorrowful mood. So after she peeled the yam and left it on the cool pot to boil, she went to the room. Her favorite Bible verse was, Put all your worries on God, for he cares about you. That was what she went to the bedroom to do, to put all her worries on God through prayer. That evening, after supper, Mr. Uncle called everyone together. It was time for the evening devotion. Sosu spoke little during the discussion. Even when he was asked a question, he answered in a few words. He was irritated when his father asked him to pray for him to get a job and about the second part of their school fees. He prayed, but his heart was full of anger. The next morning, Mr. Uncle left the house early. Someone asked me to meet him early at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. He told his wife as he went out. Who knows, a job may be coming my way. That morning, Mr. Sanku decided to talk to Sosu and Vivian before seeing them off to school. Listen to me, she said. Don't get angry with your mother, huh? Sosu, and you too, Vivian. I wish I could give you extra money every morning, but things are hard for us, and you know it. We thank God that we don't sleep on empty stomachs or go naked. Your father will soon get a job, and things will get better. Even then, we have to be economical in whatever we do. Remember what your uncle told you when he was here. You must be good citizens, and that begins at home. She spoke a few more words, and then sought them off. She hoped that her advice would enter their thoughts. Just as she left them, she turned to Sosu and asked casually, How's your friend Atipo? He's not my friend. Well, but be gentle with him. I'll try, mother. Sosu and Vivian were late to school. Something was going on at school when they got there. Sosu was surprised to see the assembly still in session. At nine, his mate ought to be in class. Why were they still at the assembly? He dropped his bag in the classroom and went to join his mate at the assembly ground. He saw Mr. Quiz writing something in his notebook. Susu knew what it was. The teacher has written in his name in that notebook and would deal with him later. The head teacher stood tall and lanky in front, saying something very serious to the whole school. Susu saw his friend Bukhari standing in front too. His face looked very sad. Susu saw that Bukhari had been crying. Why? What happened? Then, at one corner of their assembly grounds, he saw someone else and knew there was trouble. It was Bukhari's father. Look at him! Sosu heard the head teacher say, 
pointing to his friend Bukhari, you have brought his grace to yourself, your parents, and to the school. Soso looked around and saw Sunkwa. What's the matter? He asked. But Sunkwa whispered to him, Keep quiet. Soso kept quiet and waited to see what would happen. He saw Atipo leaning on his crutches and standing at the back and remembered what his mother told him a moment ago at home. Be gentle with him. Soso heard the head teacher saying, We have told you never to steal anything from anybody, not even from your parents or from your friends. The head teacher looked around at the peoples. Have we told you this or not? You have told us. The chorus. Even Sosu said the same, although he still didn't know what was happening. Then, the head teacher turned to Bukhari and asked, Why did you do that? Why have you been stealing money from your father? Sosu saw Bukhari look down. Look at me. The head teacher shouted. Haven't your father been giving you enough money? Bukhari gazed at his father before saying, Yes, sir, he has. Why then have you been stealing your father's money? Oh, so that's what's happening. So, so thought. Now he knew it. In Eden school, if a people did something very bad at home, the parents reported him to the head teacher. He would call an assembly and publicly punish the people. Some parents and teachers were against the rule, but many of them agreed that it was a good way to bring discipline to the school. But Sosu was shocked. So his friend Bukhari was a thief. So he was telling lies when he said his mother gave him all the money that he bring to school. Then he started getting afraid. What if the head teacher were to ask Bukhari who else spent his stolen money with him? What if Bukhari points at him and their other friends? Thank you, Mr. Zablin, the head teacher said, as he turned to Bukhari's father, we will take care of the rest. Mr. Zublin said, thank you, and walked to his car and sat at the back. Sosu watched as the driver drove off. It was a sad day for the Bukhari boys. To be disgraced was one thing Sosu feared most. He watched as the head teacher himself took the cane. Bukhari cried like a child, and the squire put fear in Susu. That day, he vowed never to do anything that would bring him or his family such a disgrace. The more he thought about what happened, the more he felt sorry about his attitude at home. Where would he hide his face if he was the one being punished in front of the whole school? Alone with his mother in the evening, Susu felt very sorry. He even cried as he narrated the incident that happened at school. The money you give me for school is okay, Sosu heard himself say. I will never compare myself with others again. Mrs. Anku had the son and thanked God silently for sparing her family's side disgrace.